Bienvenue to Le Café Craft. This is Patricia and we are doing tutorials for Victoria Design. And I am so excited for several reasons. First, I have the most gorgeous kit, which is called I'm a Writer. It's a brand new kit. That's one thing. Two, this is the very first time ever that I'm working with the digital kit. So I'm just borderline in heaven. I've never got so many good, incredible things to work with. Before we get into the tutorials, I wanted to get into the paper. And more of, I wanted to get into the printing of the paper, the printing of the kit. You don't have to go as crazy as I went because I printed about everything there was because I was like, why stop when you can do it all, right? So I want to go through the different paper I used, the different way I went about it and what you can do with it or not do with it, you know, depending what happened. But pretty much first the papers that are printed on. So this way you have a better idea when I talk about this, that what I'm referring to. I use cardstock white cardstock because I figure for the embellishment, if there is tags or with the background, if I want to work with them, I'm going to need some print on cardstock. So I got regular white cardstock. That's one thing. For the papers, I used this paper that I found, which is called Bold Digital. It is a paper specifically for digital printing. It is very resistant paper. I mean, it's not thick, but it's resistant. It's extremely smooth. I mean, you just glide over. It is really, a really nice paper. I have used also 100% cotton paper. I don't have any more of it because I used it all. I had some remnant. That is a very fuzzy paper. I think I have some here. See, that's the back of it. It's, it's fuzzy. It is smooth, but you know, you have that fuzzy feel to it. I also use parchment paper. This one. I mean, I think they're all the same, really. I use the ivory color, and you will see it give different tone to, to your print, which is also very interesting. And finally, just for the fun of it, I also used a vellum paper, because I figured why not, right? I mean, so I can print anything I want, whichever way I want. And what I did is I taped it on cardstock, let it loose, and put it in the printer. Now the printers, I don't know which printer you have, I know which printer I have. I have an Epson Workforce 7820. Do I like it? Eh, I will not go that far, but it does print. Okay, and that's an inject printer. I also have a 10 year old vintage brother printer, which I don't even, at this point, you cannot even see what printer it is. But it, the quality of printing is not bad at all. So I use either this one or that one, depending on what I'm doing. So going back to the kit, right? There is 20 pages of background. I printed every single one of them. I printed about everything there was to print, and you see why when we get to the tutorial and I'm sure you look at the flip through and you know why, but anyhow. So I'm just gonna give some example of different printing effect. This is on regular copy paper. You can also print on regular copy paper. I mean, there's nothing to say you can't, okay? This is this, this is on the fuzzy, paper, the cotton paper, and this is on regular copy paper as well. I want to show you the differences because you you can get creative also with your printer. This That's what I want to point out. This is on regular paper. This is on digital paper. And there is a difference. There's a difference in tone. There's different. This is like regular quality. So you see it's not as good, but you can use it for other things. This one is on the parchment paper, the ivory parchment paper, and this one is on the 
digital white paper. See, that's what I wanted to kind of show because it's fun to play with it. It's your kit. You can print it whichever way you want. Because the, the ivory linen, you see there's a big difference in tone. So depending on which one you you like better, what you want to use it for, I said try different things when you print. That's I think that's that's what is so much fun, is you have different results. Also with your your setting, right? You can have really high density and get really dark print. You can have very, very low density and have very, very extremely light print. If you want to use some of them as very light background, you, you have to experience with your printer. Anyhow, so those are the background papers. And they, I mean, they are one is prettier than the other. We go, I mean, as, as we doing our tutorial, we even get a better look at it, but it is really, really nice. It's extremely crisp. All the details come out. It's really, really nice. Nice, nice, nice. There is the journal pages. So the journal pages, there is 24 pages and it's a double page, right? So I'm gonna address the borderless setting. I printed most of the background borderless, as you can see. I printed the journal pages with the border because I wanted to use that little white border around. We see when we get to the journal. I printed them front and back. Now, when you print front and back, just saying, right? Don't get distracted into doing something else. You really, my best tip will be just do one page at a time, okay? And keep track of what you're doing, which means like don't have a cup of coffee or taking a break in the middle of it because this is not gonna work. The rule of thumb is the way your paper comes out of your printer is the way you put it back in the printer. And that will print the back of it the same way, which means up is going to be up on both sides, which is like sometimes a problem, right? So the same way it comes out, you put it back in your drawer or back in your manual feeder and it will come, your next print is going to come in the back perfectly. So that's the journal pages. Like one is prettier than the other. I mean, there is like, this is just like, look how crisp it is. I mean, those are really, really good quality digital. There is also 24 pages of a smaller format than this one, which with a bigger margin, which is actually can pretty be useful if you want to do a smaller size journal. It's the exact same print, but they have a bigger margin uh, around. Just saying, it's also an option. I didn't print any of them, but that's an option. There is 12 pages of the small format which is, and we gonna do a tutorial with those, which is you do have two pages, two double pages per page, right? And what I did on those, I printed the, the back of it with a background, which was actually this one. See this background, I printed this background on the back of those pages. And there's, there was a reason why I did that. You can print them front and back as well, just the same way. The way it comes out is the way you put them back in. It works all the time, every time. So this is the thing with that. And there is the embellishment. There is 15 pages of embellishment, which is like treasure trove. I mean, we need the things so badly, right? So I printed some on cardstock. Because I figure for tags, for, you know, things that, or background, if you need like a sturdy background for something, this is why I use the cardstock. See all those tags, I can cut them and, uh, and I can print a background in the back and my tags will be front and back with something on it. How about that? Right? Right. Okay. This is, see, this is what I wanted to, to show you. Those are some that are printed with a low density. So the, it's like more like a subtle print, depending how you want to use them. You never know. Maybe you're going to need some of those, right? 
And this is what I'm saying. And the tones get so different. This is on the linen paper. So it's got that more yellowish toned down color. Anyway, I wanted to try everything. There is also those, those the old corner pocket or other embellishment like the, for example, I want to show you something because they are so cool. I just, I mean, I just fell in love with those things. Where is things when you need them, right? There's those pens. I mean, those pens are so nice and crisp. Okay, the good thing is, I mean, really well done, Victoria Design, is there is that little fuzzy background around it, so you don't have to cut next to the pen. You know, you cut around the pen. That really does help a lot. A lot of the cards do have that, which is really nice, you know, when you do your cutout. It takes the guessing game out of it. Pockets have those little flap on the side, same thing, you know, just get to fold them. I mean, that's pretty. Look how crisp. I mean, this is so detailed. Anyway, I was I was pretty amazed with that, you know, all the whole kit. Oh, also it says, subscribe to our mailing list, victoriadesign.com. Yes, I totally suggest you sign up because my understanding is you get freebies, you get free download, you know what's going on. I mean, sometimes they feature video from Le Café Craft, which is a really good thing, as we know. So anyway, that. And this is all the papers that are printed here, this way, that way, the other way. And we're going to be able to get on with the tutorials. Okay, so the first tutorial is the paper keeper. This is what I call it. I think it's a really catchy name. I think it's so apropos. Anyhow, in order to do that, we are gonna need cardstock. I'm using craft cardstock. I'm using 12 by 12 because we're gonna need about six sheets of 12 by 12 and eventually more. So this is what I'm using. And I'm also, because I don't want to chop all my 12 by 12, I'm also using the eight and a half by 11. It's the same cardstock as you can see, right? So this way, anything less than 12 inches, I can cut in there and not destroy that. Just trying to save a piece of paper one at a time. Anyhow, dimension in centimeters for those papers are written right there, right? Okay, so we got that. We're gonna need a few more things, but I wanna start with really what we're gonna work on. And then maybe, you know, by the end, I'll just, oh, I figure out everything that we need, but I'm gonna use them as we need them, all right? So, we're gonna need this. We're gonna need scissors, cutting machine, scoring board. We're gonna need glue, I mean, that's a given, right? I'm going to use this glue because so far that's the only one which works for me. It's a long story, but that's what's going on here. I'm also going to use packaging paper, which comes, you know, when you receive like a box of something and they get that paper in, I'm going to use some of that. We're going to also need some of this to shade. We also gonna need some uh, medium weight chipboard. And actually not medium weight, I think it's, it's even like a lightweight chipboard, which is this one. It's a big sheet that I got and cut in pieces. You can use a book cover if your book cover is gonna be about 12 by 12. You can use, if you do not have chipboard, it is not an excuse not to make this project because I found out you can take some of those 12 by 12 pieces of cardstock, glue them together, right? And you will have about a soft weight chipboard with the glue and everything. Oh yes, that will totally do it. So this is what we are gonna need, I think. Yes, yes. That's all we're going to need that I can think of. All right. So the first thing we do, oh, you're going to need a big table. Ha! 
This is, this is in the supply list. Big table. Okay, because we're working 12 by 12 and we get to move them around and all that, right? So if your 12 by 12 come in a pack, which is like sheets, right? Would you good that 12 by 12? If they come in a pad like those, right? You're going to have to be careful because when you tear them out, right? There is this here, which is that little quarter inch right there. You see it? So don't forget to cut that off because if you don't cut that off, it's going to throw you completely out for your measurement. So if they come from a pad, don't forget to cut this. I mean, it happened to me so many times. You know, for the other paper pads. Anyway, just saying. All right, so for thing we do, I'm going to go all over the measurement. We cut this thing. Cutting. We cutting this. We getting right in it. Cut. Done. Okay. So now you got a real 12 by 12. I mean, if they come in sheet, you already had a real 12 by 12. And then we're going to have to score. Now, I'm going to score with you, but I'm going to show it to you on a white piece of cardstock because if I write on that, you're not going to see anything at all. Okay, so we're going to take that 12 by 12. We're going to score at one inch, which is two and a half centimeter. We're going to score at one and a half inch, which is four centimeters, which means you will have a half inch right here in between, right? Then you're going to score all the way to ten and three quarter, which is 27 and a half centimeters, which is going to give you between this score line and this score line exactly nine and a quarter, other known as 23 and a half centimeter. And whatever you got left here is going to be about, I say that because I found out they're not really exactly 12 inches. It will be about one and a quarter inch, which is three centimeters. This is what we doing right now we need to do at least six of those so i'm gonna do one or two and then i'm gonna get on with something else but you're gonna need at least six of that right so we do one inch one inch score then we're gonna do one and a half score okay every time you score make sure you're you know, your cardstock stay really good because, <laughs> you know, then you kind of score sideways. All right. One and a half. Then you're going to go all the way to ten and three quarter right here. And then you're done with that. You do six of those. We are using 12 by 12. Okay. Okay. So once they score, you fold them. I mean, we're going we're gonna to fold them so many more times. So just, you know, give them a fold, right? And you do that six times, and that gives you those right there. I'm telling you, you need a big table. Okay, you need six of those, which I got even more. One, two, three four, five, six. Okay, we can all do that. Yes, yes. All right, so that's one thing. Now, in order not to ruin my 12 by 12, we're gonna use the eight and a half by 11, which is, you know, less than 12 inches, right? Because we need nine inches. So we're gonna cut nine inches high. First of all, I got to cut this. Now, don't forget, if you do have those things, don't forget to cut them because... Ooh, it makes that weird noise. Okay. Now, I need nine inches, which is... Hold on, I'm going to tell you right now because I, write it, I have it here. Which is going to be 23 centimeters, right? Nine inches high. So, right here. Nine inches high. 
I mean, you can use your cutting machine or your utility knife. Nine inches. Okay. Now, I can give you what the strips are gonna be. They're gonna be nine inches high, right? And they're gonna be one and three quarter wide. You're gonna have to score them at a half inch, which is one centimeter. One and three quarter wide is four and a half centimeters. This is what you're gonna wanna do. Now, if you cut your strip, strips and then score at a half inch, it is not that easy, I found that out. So what I did is because I know the width is one and three quarter, is I measured and I marked one and three quarter everywhere, which I repeat is four and a half centimeters, right? So I measured one and three quarter. Okay, I do it the old fashioned way because then it, it get me so confused if I get, have to keep adding all kind of things and get a little up, right? One and three quarter and you, you know, put yourself a mark, one and three quarter and one and three quarter. And you cannot do another one because you don't have one and three quarter left. You get one and a half left, okay? And this is nine inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? 23 centimeters. Okay, this is where you're gonna cut, right? But now you wanna score at a half inch, yes? So you take your sheet, you take your board, and you're gonna find out it is so much easier. And then you're gonna score, take a mark anywhere, right? Like I start at two, you're gonna score a half inch. Yes. You go to your next mark right here, that way you're gonna cut, but you, you didn't cut it yet. You put it, line it up with a number, any number, then you score a half inch. It's a lot easier to do it like this, right, than to try to score a strip of papers. Just saying. You take your other mark, put it on a number, any number, you take a half inch, you score. Right? Then you take your next mark, put it on a number, any number, take a half inch, you score. And then finally, you have the last one here. Then you take your cutting machine. I mean, I don't know if it's crafter approved, but it just works great for some reason, right? Now you cut where you put your mark. Yes, yes. Make sure your paper is straight. Because see, now you have your strip with your score line, you can fold it and you're all good to go. Because if you try to score a little strip like that, it is definitely not easy, right? And you're gonna need, let's say, uh, I don't know, like about six of them. Yeah, we can do six. Because we get three per sheet, right? So let's do six, if we need more, we take more, but I think that should be plenty. And the last one. I mean, it's easier to cut, it's easier to score. And this you put away somewhere really far away from you so it doesn't get mixed up with, you know, the stuff that you need, right? And you're gonna need, so okay, we say six of those. Okay, you fold them. Okay, you need six of those. I think I do have six of them. One, two, three, four. Hold on, I got a little pile here. Are they all nine inches? Yes. Five and six. So you have six of those, right? With those dimension right here. And then you have six of those with those dimension right there. Now if you wanna take a screenshot and make sure you get everything right, 
go right ahead. Okay? Okay, so we got that. Now. Okay, what is next is gonna be taking that, those strips that you have, those that you made right there. Okay, and you're gonna go down. Okay, here's the fold right here. Put it on your left, right? You're gonna go down one inch, one inch down. And then you're gonna find something round that you can use, like I have a little ribbon thing here. Okay, anything round that you have. I mean, really anything round that you have. And then you're gonna go from that mark right here to here on your fold, yes? And then once you line up your circle on it, you're just gonna trace it. Yes? So now you have this round, I mean, half circle thing right there. Okay? You are gonna cut this from the mark and you round it. I mean, you can do it without making a circle because you are that good, but I'm not. Okay. So this is what we have, right? Yes? Let me take some white so you can see better. Like so. This is gonna be round like that. All right, you're gonna keep this because now what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the same thing to all of them, right? So it's gonna be pretty easy because you're just gonna trace it. Like this, and like that, and you're gonna do that on every single one of them. Yes, yes. And then we do the other side, right? Right, okay. Uh, meet you when we all done with that. Okay, so now you got the six of them done, right? Now, you take your pages that you made should have at least six of them, right? You are gonna see how the whole thing unfold. The reason I say six of them, or maybe because maybe you really like it and you wanna have more than six pages, I don't know, right? But I made six, so that's a start. Anyhow, so you take your page, one of them, okay? You have the fold here with the score line, right? And you have the other side, which is like the flippy, flappy one, right? You take this thing that you cut, you line it up. And eventually you put the fold the other way around. It doesn't matter because we're gonna keep, you know, folding them this way and that way. You line up with your page, right? Nice, it goes all the way down, yes. And then what you're gonna do is trace the same round right here, okay? So, once you get that, okay, see that round thing, you just get to do it once, and then after that, you just keep tracing. Pretty much, this is how that works. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut from the top to here, on that fold here, and then round here. Now, let me... Do one, and then you have to do six of those, right? So you cut on that fold all the way to that mark that you have, and then you round on that line that you traced, like so. See, so you do have the same because this is gonna go here. We go we, we get to that later. But see you have the same round pattern. Okay, because that's what I'm saying. Once you make one, no matter how it comes out, when once it comes out good, that's the one you keep, and then you keep rounding everything you have. Yes? So this way they all identical. Okay? So you do that with every single page that you have. 
Okay. You line it up in the bottom. Pretty good. And you trace it. Line up on the outside and trace. I'm sorry, it's brown on brown, so it's hard to see, but anyway, here. And then, then again, you cut on your fold to the mark. And then you round it up on your little tracing. You're not supposed to do that, I think. But anyway, we did it. Okay, so now you have... I work behind the scenes. So now you have six of them and they're like this, right? And they have that side or round. Okay, let's just put all of them together so we know what we're doing. Okay, so at this stage, right, you have your strips are made, your pages are cut, right? We're rounding. We're rounding everything there is. Seriously, I'm rounding this. You don't have to, but I think it's better to round it. So you round every single strips at the top, at the bottom, on both sides. I round them large, okay? This is that thing there, that puncher, it's, I don't know, it's small, medium, and large is large. Okay, you do all the strips, and then you take your sheets, and you round here, on the top here, you round here, I already did. You round here, I already did. And you round here. Okay? So you do round the four corners of your six sheets. Yes, yes. So we're rounding up. So when you're done rounding everything there is, right? Up, down, and sideways. I'm trying to put some order into this chaos here. Okay, so everything is rounded. Then you take your eight and a half by 11, you know, your small cardstock. You take a sheet out of that. And then what you need now are six of this. This is, I put it on white paper so you can see it good. It's three and a quarter wide and three and a half height, which is eight and a half centimeters by nine centimeters. Okay, so you do that. You need six of those that you round the corners and that you fold in the middle. Now the next step, when it's all riled up and everything, is to take this and go at it. So, I mean, if you don't edge anything, then you can go and have a cup of coffee. If you do edge, you put some Zen music, because there's a kind of a lot of edging going on. Okay, so this is gonna be glued that way. So you don't have to edge this, right? You're gonna edge this and here. Yes, on the six of those. Those have to be edged all the way around. Those have to be edged, again, if you're edging. All right, you don't care because this is gonna be inside. So you get to edge this, this, all around here, right? You don't have to edge this. This does not have to be edged. This, okay, I'm gonna, talk about this. This is every single one of your sheet has that score line, which is a half inch right here. This, you have several choices. Either, okay, you can edge it, right? Like really well, that whole thing. Or you can use washi or uh, I did, I use a uh, double face tape and 
I crumpled my um, packaging paper. I shitted it with my stamp to give you that. I didn't put anything else on the top because I'm going to glue maybe stuff on it. So I don't want to have it, you know, glossy or anything with Mod Podge, right? And what I did is I used the double face tape and I did strips. This way I will have washi, okay? Because that's what I'm going to use. But you can use anything. Actually, if you have some, if you want to, use i'm gonna show you why okay if you want to use some seam ribbon you can also do that and put it here now because this is gonna be the spine of the paper keeper now i have a prototype here but i'm pretty sure you saw it in the flip through but anyhow see this is where you're gonna see this right here and see i covered it with the um packaging paper right and it's easier to do it now because otherwise when you're gonna glue everything is it's pretty much get not really accessible now if you don't want to put anything you just want to age it you can but age it like there's a real contrast with this spot here because this is gonna really help us when we're gonna assemble everything together right so other than edging everything that we talk about this here what I'm gonna do and as usual, you guys can do whatever you want to do. But I'm going to put that strip right there. Okay. So, pretty much, I put it right there. Come on. Nope, 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 nope. There we go. Good. Cut. Like so. Okay. So you edge everything except the inside of here doesn't need to be edged, right? The inside here doesn't either. All of that, if you're not going to put a strip of something on this half inch, edge it really good so you have a color difference between this and that. On this side, you get to also edge all around because there's always two sides, just like a story. That's what we're doing and then we get together again and then we assemble. All right, so we edged everything. We have six of those little things here. I don't know if we use them all, but they're there. So this way we don't have to go through that again. We get six of those. They're all edged, right? Done, done and done. We get the six sheets, pages, whatever you want to call them. They are the keepers of the paper keeper. All right. So edge here, here and there. I put washi on every single one of them right there on that half inch. Whatever you use, whatever you did, right? We are going to need to assemble. In order to assemble, we need glue. I'm going to use this glue. You need a glue which glues, right? Not some glue that it's just going to fall apart because this is going to have to be sturdy. So really good glue. Also, you're going to need... I'm sorry, I didn't specify that. But you're going to need clippies, right? Because we're gluing things together, so we're going to have to keep them together. Okay. First thing first is we always going to make sure that we have all our pages the right way. Yes. So pages get to be with that little flap on your right hand side. Every single one up, up, right? I mean, don't start gluing things this way. This is not going to be good. Okay. So you take the first two. Now... The best advice I can give you is not to overthink it because the more you're going to overthink it, the less you're going to be able to do that thing. It's, I mean, it, it just does mind games to me. So you are going to fold this side right here. That's why I wanted to put a washi or shade it like a different color so we know what we're talking about, right? This side here. 
nice and flat. You're gonna take your second page to get it ready. And you're gonna have it folded just the same, right? This is gonna be the back of it. Yes, yes. Take that first page. If you don't want this flip to bother you. Here, put something here. You are gonna put glue right here. I'm gonna use some uh, parchment paper, wax paper, whatever you have, right? Because you don't want to mess that up here. Just in case, you know, you just never know, right? You have it nice and flat. You take your glue, take the glue, shake the glue, glue. You put it, okay, don't be afraid to put glue, right? You put the glue on the whole flap, but not where you have the washi, yes? See, this is there. There's a reason for everything. Okay, so you did. You put your glue everywhere, and you do have your half inch here with your washi. Yes, you take your page the same way, right? With the little flappy thing here, take it this way. You are gonna put it right on top, border to border with that page, like so. Border to border okay line it up nice it's gonna look like this it is border to border front top side okay you still have like i don't know like a minute and a half to be able to uh, shift it around if it goes places and you just press yes we are now have two pages together. Take this thing, you put it here, you do that again. Come on, glue. There we go. We put the glue on that flat. I, I, I don't mind to spend time on that part because he confused me so many times that I will understand that you will maybe get confused. But then again, maybe it's just me. You take your page, just get the flap on the side here, turn it around, you fold it, then you see your washi tape right here, or your shaded or whatever you did to that, right? And you line it up with those pages already down. So as we're gonna go, it's gonna get a little bit, you know, harder to line up. You have time to move it. but it's gonna have to be like this, right? Edges to edges, yes, yes. Okay, again, you put this thing down, you take your glue, you take your page with the little flap on your right, turn it around, you do have your half inch right here, yes, and you gotta put it just like that. You're gonna put, take the glue. I mean, it's not really, you know, that difficult, but that's the part that you really need to shoo everybody away and just do that. Because it just, I mean, I got confused a few times doing that thing. And then if you start second guessing yourself, and, you know, this is, it is not right. Okay, put the page down. Border to border, take this thing off. You want to make sure you line up the bottom and the top. You do have time to adjust if you need to. I mean, it's it's not a, it doesn't have to be to the millimeter, okay? But, you know, you cannot have them like this way, this way, that way, right? Make sure it's good. Make sure you like it. That's very important. That's a very important step. Make sure you like it. Okay, so we do that again. Take your page, get the flap on your right hand, turn it around. Make sure you have your strip right there in front of you. Okay, don't start gluing things this way, that way, right? Make sure you have the whole thing folded right in front of you. You put the glue here. Okay, I put it this way. It's a lot easier to assemble on the, you know, on the uh, width than on the height. I mean, if it's easier for you to do it standing up, as per se, or 
you know, whatever is easier for you, but that's where it worked out the best for me here. Same thing, you take your page, you line up with the top here, border to border, all the way down. Take that thing out. Okay, are we good? And this is gonna be the last one. Take the glue. Come on, the old glue. We have a job to do. And then after that is like easy peasy. I mean, you're just gonna breeze through the whole thing. And you are gonna have yourself a paper keeper. Okay, same thing, flap on the right hand side. Make sure you see your washi. Put it down. Make sure you line up on the top. Make sure you border to border, all the way down. Yes, take this off. And this is what it should look like, okay? They're all together. Now, you take your clippies, you clip. This way we're gonna be able to do the cover, waiting for this to dry really well. All right? Now, if you have a tiny little bit of discrepancy of, you know, that one is a little bit higher than the other or something like that, don't, I mean, pretty much don't sweat it. Number one, it's handmade, so it's not going to be like, perfecto. This is one thing. Two, we are going to put something over it anyway, so it's not like it's going to be a, a, a big, big deal, okay? And that's it. You just let it dry, right? And then... Okay, just like double check all your little sides are right here, all your little flips. Yes, yes. And then we're gonna do the cover, right? Cover coming up. Now we're doing the cover. For the cover, as I said, if you do not have any chipboard, and you don't need heavyweight chipboard at all, like this is a soft weight chipboard, you can take some of your uh, 12 by 12 sheets, and glue two or three of them together and that will give you exactly the same result. Or you can use also the back of paper pad, you know, it's a 12 by 12, so matter as well, right? The dimension of the cover is gonna be nine and a half inches by 12 inches, other known as 24 centimeters by 30 and a half centimeters, which is pretty much the dimension of your sheets, right? So this is what we have, nine and a half by 12. First thing I'm gonna do is cover that. So you can cover it Again, whichever way you would like to cover it. I'm gonna cover mine with packaging paper, which I'm just gonna crumple in little balls. Like so, right? And then take an ink pad right here. All right, that's gonna be about that. So, that's okay, we just put it in the, we flip it in the back. So I got plenty here. Try to have like a bunch coming out, right? You know, all around, because as usual, you know, having more is better than not having enough. Okay, and now we're gonna flatten it somehow. Okay, now, glue. We expecting cooperation from the glue. All right, I'm gonna glue the board. All right. And I'm gonna put it. All right. All right, we're gonna make it a little bit proper and have kind of the same all around like so
Okay, now we're gonna glue this flap like this. All right, we're gonna glue this flap. Whichever technique you have to do to cover your cover, covering the cover, just do it your way. You don't have to do it the way I do it. Because I'm sure this is not the way you are doing it. Okay, so I'm doing it like this. Then I do it like this. This way, I do have a strong corner, right? Angle here. I put a little bit of glue here, right? It kind of reinforced the corner a little bit more. I mean, that's that's what I think anyway. So keep that in. And fold. I have glue all over me. All right. See, it's nice. It's neat. Anyway, for what you're worth. Okay, it is on. See, I like that because you get nice, neat corners. Anyway, you know, everybody's got their own thing, don't they? Okay, so I got one cover, two cover, right? Because of course I did the other one. I'm gonna say we're not gonna spend all day making covers. Yes, now I wanna check if I used one of the background. See, I got plenty all around. See, that's what I'm, I'm saying to to have a return wide enough that you can put um, a regular sheet of paper, right? And then it won't, you know, you're not gonna be having nothing there, right? Is this clear? I hope so. Okay, just like that. Mm, I like it. Okay, so we got the covers done. Next thing we have to do is put the covers on the paper keeper. This is the next step. We're putting the covers on the paper keeper. Now we are gonna put the cover on the paper keeper, right? In order to do so, you need that cover, the back cover. You will also need one extra piece, which is gonna be 12 inches high, the height of your cover, right? which is 30 and a half centimeter and two and a half inches wide, which is six and a half centimeter. You are gonna make a mark at one inch, which is two and a half centimeter and add another half inch, right? Which is one centimeter. You make that mark, those two marks, right? So you have a half inch right there in the middle. You take your scoreboard, and you score, find a number, any number, and then you score that first line, and then that second line. Okay, so that was not too hard. You fold nicely. I mean, it doesn't have to be incredibly folded, right? Both ways, there we go. You round it up. Okay, and then you erase your marks and then you fold it like so. Okay, this is gonna be going this way, right? Which means you're gonna have here, when we're gonna put it on the paper keeper, like so, you're gonna have that half inch again, 
that score line that you made. You also have to cover it with, if you're covering them, either you shade it really good or you use your washi tape or your ribbon or uh, your homemade washi like I did and you put it right there. So this way, again, you have a visual as per where you actually are going to put the glue, the glue. Like so. Okay. Now, I need scissors right here. All right. So you have something which is going to look like this. You are going to take some glue and you're going to glue one inch, right? That inch right there on the side with the washi on the outside on your cover like so. It will look something like this. Yes. So we're putting glue on here. Glue, 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 glue. All right. So you're putting the glue right on here. Now, don't forget the, the part. This is why the visual import is pretty important. The part where you have your washi, your seam, or where you, um, you know, shade it really well, that is on the outside. It is not on the inside, which means you are going to glue this part on here, like so. Okay, you fold it so you can see where you at. Yes, yes. And you're going to put little clips. Now you can take your paper keeper, which should be dry by now, and reuse those clips. And then this way we can work on the paper keeper itself. All right, this is drying. Now you take your paper keeper, right? You have it like this and it's all nice and it's all the way it's supposed to be. When you open it, kind of like so, okay? And then you see your little accordion things here. You realize that, let me show you, that this side here doesn't have any washi. Okay, the reason why we didn't put it first is one, it will have been very confusing. Two, we were gluing. So just in case some glue came over or you know how things goes, right? So you're going to take additional strips of whatever you're putting there and apply them on this piece of your accordion, which is not cover or not age or not, you know, doesn't have anything on it. And you just gotta slide it right in there and it should be just fine, like so. And then cut here and cut here. And then you keep on going because the next one is gonna be just the same. So you just, you know, just push them a little bit nicely, right? They're going to open. And then you have another one here, which you're going to cover just the same. And then with small scissors, you're going to make it, you know, prettier at the ends, right? So we are doing that on every single one of them. All right, and it should be one more right here. Again, you know, put it flat, really nice. Should be pretty well articulated, really. And here is the last strip. Okay, and clip, and clip. So now, okay, you can see your accordion is all covered, right? So whatever you use for that, it should be all covered everywhere. Okay, now we're taking the back cover. Okay, how do we know the back cover? The front cover is where you have a flap on your left-hand side, right? 
the back cover is where you have no flap. I mean, it goes the other way around. It's still on your left hand side, but you know, it's not flapping inside, right? So it looks like this. You do take your cover, you take your clippies off. And you're just gonna do like we did before, which means it's this way, you have your washi or whatever you have here. You're gonna put the glue on here, right? And then you are gonna line up with the side of your paper keeper, just like that, okay? So let's just do that. And then we'll be done with the back cover. Okay. So you have your glue everywhere, like so. Take your cover, put it nicely in front of you. Your paper keeper in front of you, you take your cover, you hold on those sides here, right? And you go right on top of your paper keeper and you line up with the rest of everything, right? To make sure you really lined up, pick it up, Press it down, and now you know you are even here. Check the top and the bottom to see if we got maybe like, you know, a few little tenth of an inch here, tenth of an inch there. Put your clips, and let it dry. Just let it dry. You have your back cover right here. And then we do the front cover, okay? Next step is the front cover. All right, so now it's dry. I mean, we sure hope it is. We take the clips off and we are gonna put the front cover. So you take the front cover. Now you decide up, down, which one is, you know, which one you like better. This is your front cover. So, you know, pay attention to which way you want it to be. And I would try to pay attention as well. Okay, so this is gonna go like so, right? Which means, it is gonna be level with your paper keeper. Yes, yes. In order to do that, we are gonna put glue here on that one inch right here. This is where you do not put glue. This is why visually you made it different. So I'm gonna take this because here, I don't know what's gonna be here, but I know I don't want glue on it, right? So this side, I'm taking some precaution. Okay, so we're gonna put glue on this. And then when it's all finished and done, you're gonna take, you know, little small scissors, right? And then go and just, you know, make it like nice and tidy. Okay. Okay, you take your cover, you decide, all right, which way this is gonna go. This is gonna go like this, okay? And you line it up with your side right here. You know, check the up and down and just put it down, line it up to make sure it's lined up. Again, pick it up, press it down. So it's gonna line up with the bottom of your paper keeper. It is nice, it is exactly the way you want it. And then you take your clips and you clip it all together, okay? And now you let it dry. All right, and that's it. You got your front cover and you have your back cover. And now we're ready to work on the inside. And that's the next step. All right, so it's dry. Taking the clips off. All right, and now we are glued in. Yes, yes. So that's your front cover. Those are your pages. Okay, this is gonna go inside, but we're gonna help it to do that. All right, this is what you have. Right now, what we're gonna do is fold those little flips here, right? So you have your little flips. You have six of them. So you score them really well. And we're gonna do one at the time. It's, we're gonna do the same thing to every single one of them. All right. And then we are gonna take the glue 
And this is what we're gonna do, okay? So we're gonna do one at a time, right? You are gonna put glue right on the fold. No more, no less. Only on the fold. You're gonna need like maybe three clippies, like so. Okay, glue. All right. You fold. And you clip. Okay. Right? Okay. Let's put it this way. See, we can see better and do better. All right. We take the glue again. You put your line of glue on that fold. Now, the reason for that is what it's going to do is going to pinch the paper and act like a gigantic paper clip. All right, you fold it, thick clippies, and make sure you put them like right at the edge there. So this is where it's gonna pinch. And one more, let's do this for the time being. So you take your clips from the first one, Take your glue, you put a line of glue. Okay. You fold it. And you clip it. And you do that until you run out of pages to do. <laughs> or paper clip, <laughs> whatever comes first. <laughs> All right, like so. And then you turn your page and then you do this again, and this again, and this again. Same thing. All right, so now this is dry. I mean, we sure hope so anyway. So we take all the clippies, paper clips, whatever you put there to hold out. Okay, now we are gonna take those little strips that you made, right? Those strips, okay. And I'm gonna show you where they go and then we're gonna have to glue every single one of them, all right? We are gonna glue, this is how your strip is, right? You have this part here, the angled part, and you edged it or whatever you pick for doing, okay? And you have that half inch right there. You're gonna put glue on this half inch you're gonna hold it like so. You're gonna have glue on your fingers, okay? And then you are gonna glue it right in this fold, okay? Not the first fold, the second fold, this fold. And you're gonna put it, you're gonna place it right there just before the fold, like so, okay? You gotta hold your page so you can see you're not interfering with the folding of your page. And then, unfortunately in this case, you're gonna have to kind of hold it and hold it until it actually dries, right? And you're gonna have to do that on every single page. I'm gonna do a few with you. And as I said, it's extremely repetitive, but it's not complicated. So the, the, the time consuming part is gonna be actually to have the glue to dry. I mean, that's not a, a bad problem, is it? I don't think so. Now I'm gonna fold it in that that fold right there. Gotta put line it up with the bottom of the page and glue it down. Can you fold? You get to make sure, right? You're not on the fold. Alright, fold it. Now, see, one of the reasons we rounded everything is then you don't have to angle, okay? This way, all angles are the same angles. Make sure you don't go on the fold. Good. So now you turn that page, and you're going to do the same thing here. And you're going to go on your second fold here the inside of that page. All right, so when that's done, just to make sure that you're gonna fold all your pages back, right? Press on that accordion and clip again. 
Now this is going to be harder to clip because it got a little bit thicker. Which is why it was better to do now than to do before because it would have been more of a problem to assemble the six pages and the cover together. You have to be so strong with those clips. Okay. And you let it dry. Next step is we're going to put those little things here. Right? Right. So find them. They should be handy somewhere because we're doing that next. It's all nice and dry. We're taking the clippies off nicely. Okay. And then what we have is now we have pages with both. I mean, two flips, one flip on each side. Yes, yes. So now we're putting those things in. Those things are pretty important, actually. Okay, so the first thing you do is you have to measure, measure your page, which is about nine inches. So half of that is four and a half. So you make yourself a mark at four and a half. Your page is 23 centimeters, so your mark will be at 11.7 millimeters, right? You take the middle of it. You take your little folding thing here. You find the middle of it, right? So then you're going to take this and you're going to make a mark right here at the fold. The reason for that is that you are going to be able to line up both of your middle together. See how that works? And now you know you're in the middle. To glue it, it's going to be a little bit the same thing that we did here, which is you're going to put the glue at the fold. Nowhere else than just the fold. And then you're going to have to put a clip as well. Okay? So... You put a line of glue at the fold, like so. You line up with your middle of the page where you have put the mark, like so. And you fold it. Now, just take one page, okay? Make sure you don't get the other page dragged into that. Put a clip right at the end there. And while we add it, because we're going to do, you know, every single page... You take your glue again, and you're going to glue that bottom part right here. Just the bottom. No more, no less. Like so. You put it on your, uh, on your strip right there. Just try not to put glue everywhere like I just did. Fold it. Same thing. Take a clippy and clip it. Like so. Right? So this is what you have for each page. So you're doing it on each. Okay, so at this point, we take the last clippies off, right? Because it's all dry and good to go. All right, there's a few things you do is you check if you didn't, like, you know, smudge glue everywhere. You can also do, see, there's a little bit of glue here. Who knows why? Because we sure didn't glue anything over here. Anyway, all right, you take your ruler, right? And nicely, delicately, you put it under your little right flap here and you make sure you have no glue all the way up. Now, you don't undo the glue already there. Is it just to make sure the flap is free on the side? Now... This is the time when you realize that you just discover the wheel. Why? Let me show you why. You take your papers. Ooh, you get all those nice background papers. You insert your papers. You slide your papers. Like so. Who needs a binder? Not you. Who needs plastic sheets that you have to slide things in forever not you how many pages can you put a lot i can put up to 15 pages now if you want to see what you have oh guess what you can you see because you can flip through and see what you have right okay let's keep on going oh i have more background right there okay well we're just gonna put them right in how do we do that we just put them nicely in preferably straight and you just slide them down yes yes so now 
Here's the explanation. You do have to glue here in order to, because this is the outside, right? The outside world where everything fall, okay? So that does not fall. You have this one down here. We just hold the whole thing. It's not going to slip through here. Now, this one is fairly free, right? Except to the bottom. So you give it a little bit of clamp to it. Okay, now you have nine inches, nine and a quarter, actually, almost, right? Which means you do have three quarter inch that you can play with. And in centimeters, it's going to give you plenty of room as well that you can play sliding in and out. I mean, there's no struggle. This is what I wanted to say. All right, I did print all the set of pages for my journal, right? Well, guess what? I'm going to put them right there. And then this way, when I get to it, they'll be all in the same place, nice and flat. What else do we have? Well, we got plenty more. I did print the smaller booklet and they're all together and there's 12 pages. And I put them like so and it goes all the way down and there's more you can put your coffee dye paper and you slide it all the way down perfect there's your embellishment here they are and you slide them all the way down so my point is it is a paper keeper it means that you can keep all your... And I have cardstock in this bunch, right? You can keep all your papers together. You can keep your whole kit together. You can make your own kit of anything you want. All your grid paper, all your different coffee dye paper, whatever you want to keep together. You don't need a binder. You don't need plastic sleeve. You, that's all you need is regular craft cardstock, glue, scissors, you're done. And now you got plenty of room to have as much thickness as you would like to have. So this is one of the reasons I say six pages, paper is heavy, right? Now, can you put 10 pages, 20 pages? I'm pretty sure you can. But why would you do that? Because it's a paper keeper, but it's also a paper sorter. You can put, I mean, you can sort them by theme, by colors, by kits, by flowers, botanical, animals, butterflies, whatever you want to do. You have all your papers. I mean, how cool is this, right? You have all your papers nice and neat. Now... Question comes to, what about this page here? Because there's nothing in that page. Well, we're going to take care of that. That is next. We're going to take care of front cover, back cover, and the back of the pages. Good? Good.